Um, so my name's Claire Turner, as Jennifer mentioned, and I'm an employment and immigration solicitor here at Ward Hadaway. Now, Ward Hadaway has offices in Manchester, Leeds and Newcastle. And as part of the immigration team, we frequently assist visa applicants in the UK and overseas and help them obtain visas for either extending their stay in the UK or coming over to the UK for the first time. Um, we also assist employers when they're wanting to recruit or sponsor individuals from outside the UK and we help them obtain the sponsor license that they need for that. So today's session is um, going to focus on the graduate route and it's still a relatively new route. It only came into, into being last summer um, and it's a really flexible visa so you don't need to be sponsored or have a job um, which means that many more graduates are, are able to stay in the UK following their studies, which is great. Um, so yeah, Jennifer, if you just want to go on to the third slide. Next one. Perfect. OK, so as I said, the, the graduate immigration route opened for ap applications last summer. So it opened on the 1st of July 2021. And this visa route allows um, successful applicants to stay in the UK to either work or to look for work at any skill level. And the visa lasts for generally two years following completion of your studies, but it, it is three years for anyone who's completed a, a PhD. Now, this route is, is unsponsored, so you don't need to have a, a job offer in place before you apply for the graduate route. And it's also great in terms of flexibility because it allows you to, to work in any role. Um, it, it also allows you to swap jobs during the duration of your visa. So you could start a, a job at one place and you could move to another job during that two year or three year period. And it's a great opportunity to allow you to develop your career in the UK as and when required. So the next slide please, Jennifer. Perfect, so in terms of eligibility, to be eligible for the graduate route, you've got to um, you've got to currently have so you've got to currently have a valid student visa or or another tier four visa. So you've got to make sure that you, if you're interested in the graduate route, that you do apply for it whilst you still hold a current valid visa. You've also got to have successfully completed a course at an undergraduate level or above or alternatively you could have completed what, what's referred to as a relevant qualification and I'll come on to what's classed as a relevant qualification a bit later on. So generally you've got to have studied at an approved UK higher education provider and that, that um, provider has to have a track record of compliance. So the good news is that the University of Salford, they are an approved UK higher education so any undergraduate level course that you complete with Salford, that, that will be eligible for the graduate route. You've also, another thing, so it's it's not enough to have just completed a course um, at, a, at an approved provider, you've got to have also completed what we refer to as the relevant period, and that's got to have been completed from here in the UK. So there are some exceptions to this, which I'll come on to, but generally speaking, you've got to have confirmed, um, completed, sorry, a relevant period of time in the UK. So, so virtual learning or, or remote courses might not necessarily count. The other thing you've got to be careful of is that you've, you've got to have successfully completed the qualification that's linked to your student visa or your tier four visa. So when you got granted your student visas, you, you will have got what's called a confirmation of acceptance for studies, and that will have named the course that you're undertaking on, on that confirmation. So you've got to make sure that, that that course that was named is the actual course that you that you've completed. Now, if, if the university provider has changed the name of the course slightly or, or there's been a reason for a slight change, that won't necessarily um prevent you applying for the graduate visa but it's always best just to check and if there has been a change in the name of the course provider that then speak to the university about that and, and they'll be able to provide an explanation to the UKVI and explain that. You've got to, it's important to note that you must have um, 
you're not allowed to apply for the graduate visa more than once. So in order to be eligible, you must not have previously been granted permission under the doctorate extension scheme or as a graduate prior to your first application. And on top of this, when you when you complete your studies, your um, student sponsor, so that would be the university, they've got to notify the Home Office that you've successfully completed that course. So whilst you don't have to wait until your graduation date, you do have to have successfully passed all your exams and completed the course, and the university would have to confirm that to the UKVI. Another great thing about the graduate route is that there's no requirement for you to demonstrate um, that you've got enough money to maintain yourself whilst in the UK. So with some other visa routes, you do have to, to show that you've got a certain amount of money in your bank account. For the graduate visa, you don't need to do that. You also don't need to demonstrate any um, English language ability. And, and the reason for that is that if you've completed a, a relevant course in with a UK higher education provider, the UK VI um, deem that you've got the appropriate level of English. So you don't need to demonstrate that separately. OK, the great. Next slide, please. Perfect. So as I mentioned, um, you can apply for the graduate visa if you've done like an, an undergraduate level degree or higher or an alternative relevant qualification. Now, what we mean by a relevant qualification are things such as so this might be a higher education course and it might be something such as um, for anyone who's training to be a solicitor, for example, it might be the law conversion course, the GDL or even the legal practice course as well. Um, foundation programmes in medicine or dentistry, they're also eligible. Or if you're training to be a teacher, then the PGCE or the PGDE, so the Postgraduate Certificate in Education, or the Postgraduate Diploma in Education, they would, they would count for this visa type. Also, you could perhaps have completed a professional course where, require, um, where it was a requirement to study at a UK bachelor's degree level or above with a professional organisation. So that might be things um, such as uh, doctors, architects, lawyers, teachers or nurses. So to work in one of those professions in the UK, you will have had to do an extra professional course and that would be accepted as part of your graduate um, visa application. The next slide, please. OK, so in terms of qualification requirements, so as I mentioned before, you won't be prevented from meeting this qualification requirement if the name of your course is changed by the university, um, as long as the content and the general gist of that course remains the same. So as long as you've not completely switched courses um, that, that your student, so your student visa allowed you to be in the country perhaps to, to carry out a degree in law and you haven't wildly changed that and gone and done a different degree, if the name of the course has changed but the content is the same, then that will be okay. Um, you'll not be prevented as well if, if the university or, or your sponsor, if they changed things in terms of the assessment criteria. So they might have added like an assessed work placement to your undergraduate studies. That's OK as well. And that also relates to study abroad. So if you originally intended that there wouldn't be any study abroad associated with your undergraduate degree, but that then changed throughout the course of your studies, then that would be fine and you, you wouldn't be prevented from um, getting the graduate visa because of that. Next one. OK, so I also mentioned the relevant period. So, so one of the requirements for the graduate route is that you've spent sufficient time in the UK during your, during your studies. And um, the relevant period is generally 12 months. But if you're if your undergraduate course or your other course that you're relying on to apply for this visa was less than 12 months, then as long as you've spent the full duration of the course in the United Kingdom, then that's OK. So for courses that last longer than 12 months, you've got to have spent at least 12 months in the UK during this time. Now, there was a little bit of um, relaxation to these rules in light of the COVID pandemic. Um, so 
during the pandemic, the government, um, they recognised that people who were perhaps due to commence their studies in the UK were prevented from travelling over, over here and therefore the initial part of their course or maybe part of their course of second year or third year, that had to be done um, remotely from, from home. And the, the government recognised that and, and they don't necessarily prevent you from applying for the graduate visa because of that. So where this, the, the dates are key in this, so you'll all get a copy of the slides, um, but where distance learning took place overseas between the 24th of January 2020 and the 27th of September 2021, so any time that you spent during that period where you spent studying overseas, that's not going to prevent you meeting that 12-month um, requirement to be in the UK. If you began your course in 2020, as long as you came to the UK when the restrictions were relaxed and you entered the UK on or before the 21st of June 2021 and completed that course of study in the UK with permission as a student, so you still needed to have your student visa. Or if you began your course in 2021, as long as you came to the UK and entered to continue your studies before the 27th of September 2021, then um, any time spent overseas wouldn't affect you in terms of that relevant period. And they were just they were just relaxations to the rules brought in for COVID. But for any courses that are starting now or have started this year, then you do need to make sure that you've spent um, the 12 months at least in the UK or if your course is less than 12 months, you need to have been in the UK for the full duration of, of that of that course. Um, if uh, the next slide, please. So in terms of scholarships, th this might not apply to everyone, but if you've been grant awarded a scholarship or if you're receiving sponsorship by, by a government, and that might be your home government or perhaps an international scholarship agency, so perhaps you're getting um, your course fees or your living costs, uh, paid for to help you study in the UK so if you've received funding of, of that sort in the in the last 12 months or the 12 months prior to when you're going to make your graduate visa application then you've got to have written consent from that body the government or the agency who have been sponsoring you for that under the scholarship so you'd need to let them know that you're planning on making an application under the graduate visa route and they would need to agree to that as well. Normally, this can just be demonstrated through through like a letter from, from that um, government or, or agency just to confirm that, that they are happy with you um, applying for the graduate route. In terms of when to apply for the graduate route, um, you need to apply. So the key thing is that you need to apply before your student or your tier four visa runs out. So you need to have a valid visa at the point that you make your application to switch to the graduate route. You need to also make sure that you've had your final course results from the university. If you try and apply for the graduate uh, visa before that, you, you're not going to be successful because you do need to prove that you've successfully completed the, co um, the course. As I mentioned, you don't need to wait until you've officially graduated from, from the course. So you don't need to wait for your graduation day or anything like that. But you do need to have um, your um, exam results and you do need to know that you've successfully passed. The university, as your sponsor, should have already notified the, the home office by the time you make your application. So it's worth just linking in with the university and um, to let them know that you're planning on making an application for the graduate visa and, and just making sure that they've notified the home office that you've successfully completed the course of study. The other thing to note is that you need to be in the UK um, to make an application. So if you if you applied from outside the UK, then your application would be rejected and you'd be refused entry to the UK. You could um, also, if you do leave the, leave the country and make an application from overseas, pardon me, you could actually lose your entitlement to apply for the graduate route. So please do make sure that you're, you're still in the UK before you make that application. If, if you do make an application from overseas, as I said, it will be rejected. You also might not get a refund in terms of the application fee, so you might lose out on that money. 
In terms of leaving the UK whilst your application is being considered, you, you shouldn't do that. So you should make sure that you don't leave the UK or the common travel area whilst you're waiting for a decision on your application. Because if you do so and the UK government finds out that you're not actually in the UK, that might affect your eligibility for this visa route. If So what happens if you've applied for the graduate route while your student or tier four visa is still valid, but then it runs out before you've had a decision on your graduate route? On your graduate visa that's okay so even if your visa expires as long as you've submitted your application in time for the graduate route you're still entitled to stay in the UK whilst your application is being considered and um, so you don't need to worry about that I would always recommend that you do if you're considering the graduate route and wanting to make an application that that you do make that application as soon as you've got your course results and, and have successfully passed and that you do apply in plenty of time and um, before your student visa runs out just to, to avoid any um, difficulties with that but generally as long as your application's been made in time you'll be okay and you'll be entitled to remain in the UK until you've got a decision on that application. The next one Okay, in terms of the fees, so the application fee for the graduate route has recently gone up. Um, so it used to be £700 um, for the application fees. This has now gone up to £715. On top of this, you'll also have to pay what's called the immigration health surcharge. Now, this rate, um, it can change. It hasn't for a little while, but it's currently set at £624. And that B, um, the health surcharge is payable per year of your visa. So, for example, if you're applying for it for the two year visa, so if you've done an undergraduate course, then you would have to pay um, £1,248. Or if you're applying for the three year visa, then you would have to pay £1,872. Now, just a little side note on this, if you if you did then go on to get a job in um, the NHS or a public sector healthcare, then you might be eligible for a refund on that health surcharge. It's not guaranteed, but um, it's just worth bearing in mind that if you do go on to get a, a job in healthcare, then you might be eligible for a refund on the surcharge. If you've got any dependents um, with you in the UK and they're also applying, I'll come on to dependents a little bit later, but if you've got any dependents who are going to be applying to stay with you on the graduate visa, then they also need to pay the application fee and the health surcharge as well. Next one, yeah, perfect, okay. So in terms of um, practical steps on how you go about making the application, as I said, Ward Hadaway, we, we help people make these applications frequently. So if anyone is considering making a graduate application and want support with that, then, then do get in touch. But for the vast majority of applicants, the, the process is fairly straightforward. It's normally entirely digital. So normally what happens is you, as the applicant, upload your own documents um, onto an online system and you complete what's called a live scan. Now, that live scan is, is similar to a selfie. So it's a, a facial recognition tool and it just checks that you're the individual applying for that visa and it matches your student visa and it matches the documents that you're uploading to support your application. You to find the um, application form and, and the system to do that, you need to go to gov.uk, so the UK government's website. And if you search for graduate visa, then you'll you'll come to the right link. Um, you'll need to create a UK VI account if you don't already have one, and that will allow you to go through to the ID check, which is where you'll do the, the live scan um, and that will verify your identity. In order to do this and to make sure that you've got everything you need to make your application, you need to make sure that you've got your um, biometric residence card or permit. So that will have been given to you at the time you were granted your student or tier four visa. So you should already have that. You need to make sure that you've got that with you when, when you come to make your application. If you're um, an EU, an EEA or a Swiss national, 
then you can use your passport to verify your identity on the app. So as long as your passport's got the, the biometric chip in it, which most passports do now, you'll be able to use that um, to prove your identity. The app is completely free. Um, it's compatible with Android phones and it's also compatible with the most recent iPhone. So if you've got an iPhone 7 or a newer model, then the app is compatible. If you don't have a compatible phone, then, then don't worry. You are able to use um, the app on, on a family or friend's phone as well. So it should be fairly straightforward to do. Um, if you can't apply online, I think just the next slide, please. So if you can't apply online for any reason, so for example, if you don't have a biometric residence card or if you don't, if you're not from the EU or um, a Swiss national or you don't have a passport that's got the chip in it, then you can make an application in person as well. And in order to do this, you would need to visit um, a UK Visas and Citizens Application Services Centre. So to find your nearest one, you just need to go on to Google. You just need to type in Visa, Visa Services Centre and um, it'll tell you where your nearest centre is. You'll have to book an appointment um, to attend one of these centres. So make sure you don't just turn up, make sure you have booked an appointment. And you'll need to take with you your um, CAS number from your current student or tier four visa. If you don't know that number, then the university should be able to provide that to you. You don't need to get a new number to apply for the graduate visa and you need to use the existing one that's linked to your student visa. Um, so make sure you take that with you if you're going to make the application in person. The next slide. OK, perfect. So once you've made that application, um, whether it be through the online portal or whether you've attended the service centre, then you sh you'll get your decision. And the usual process and times that we're seeing at the moment to, to get a decision on the on graduate route visas are around eight weeks. So, so do make sure that you leave enough time um, and make sure that you've, you've got sufficient time to process that application. However, as I said, as long as you submitted your application prior to your student visa running out, then you can stay in the UK whilst, whilst you're waiting for a decision on your graduate application. So in terms of if you've applied online, so if you have a digital route, what you'll receive is a digital status if your application is successful. So you should receive an email confirming your digital status and this will also include an electronic copy of the decision letter which is issued by the UKBI so that will tell you if you've been successful or, or not. As soon as you get a notification um, of the decision on your graduate route application you're able to view your immigration status digitally and, and some of you might have already done that through your student visa but it's basically um, what we call an e-visa, an electronic visa and that um, proves your rights to um, remain and to work in the UK. That can also be used as proof of right to work if any employer asks for it you can show them that. You, you can also use your um, UKBI account details so that the account that you created to make your application you can use those and that will allow you to sign on to the platform and it'll um, you, your e-visa will be stored there so you don't need to um, hang on to a physical copy of that you'll be able to log on to the system whenever you need it and, and you can um, generate a share code so you'll be there's an option on there and you can generate a share code which can then be sent to your employer they can then log on to that system as well just to check that you've got the right permission to work in the UK. The, the online platform is great. It made an in-person um, application so I think that yeah perfect so if you've made an in-person application by attending one of the the application services centres then you will receive a biometric residence permit and you'll still 
once you receive that permit, you should then be able to create an account online and you'll be able to use some of the online services that, that I've talked about above. So you'll be able to generate a share code and things like that and use the online system as proof of your right to work for any employers that you might have. Next slide. OK, so what what can you do if you're successful in your application for a graduate visa? So you are allowed to take up extra study so you, you can go on to do another um, course. But what you can't do is you can't enroll on another um, education course, which you should technically have a student visa for. So you wouldn't be able to apply for a graduate visa and then sign up and do another undergraduate course at, at the university, for example, because you'd need a student visa for that. You can um, work, as I've said, you can work in any role, any skill level. There, there's no um, requirement for sponsorship if you've got the graduate visa. So you can work as someone who's self-employed or you can um, even take up voluntary work or you can work in an organisation as well. And you don't need to have a, a required skilled role as, as they refer to for, for other visa routes. You can also... So whilst you need to stay in the UK, whilst your application is being decided, once it has been decided and, and you've been successful, once you've got that graduate visa for, for two or three years, you're allowed to travel in and out of the UK as many times as you want while you have that visa. So there's no restrictions in terms of traveling in and out. Um, but just make sure that you don't leave the UK until you've got confirmation that, that your visa has been accepted. The next slide. The so things that you can't do, are, um, you can't, so whilst you can work in, in a wide variety of jobs, you can't actually work as a professional sports person. So you couldn't get paid um, to be a footballer, for example. If, if that's the job that you're going on to do, you would need a separate visa and you'd need a professional sports person visa, um, which your employer would, would have to discuss with you and would have to sponsor you for. You can't access public funds, so you, you're not entitled to any benefits or anything like that under your graduate visa. As I said, you can't study with a student sponsor on a course which would otherwise meet the requirements of a student visa, so you can't go on to do another undergraduate degree, for example. Um, and also one thing to note is that once you've been granted your student, uh, your graduate visa, sorry, if that's for two or three years, you can't then extend that visa so you couldn't have a graduate visa for two years and then apply to extend the visa for another two years. It doesn't work like that. It's two years or three years, depending on what qualification you have. And also the time that you spend on, the gra on a graduate visa, it doesn't count towards um, the time you need to apply for settlement. So any time spent on the graduate visa wouldn't count towards settlement. Next slide. OK, so I mentioned before that if you've got any um, dependents with you in the UK and they were making an application alongside yours, they would need to pay the application fee and the immigration health care surcharge. You, In terms of dependents, so if you've got any dependents with you now under the student visa or if any of your dependents do successfully come to the UK, um, in reliance on your student visa, then that's fine. They can make an application under the graduate route as well. So if, if you've got, um, for example, a partner or a child who's currently here with permission under the student visa, it shouldn't be a problem. And as long as your graduate route visa application is accepted, they should also be able to make a successful application as well. If you've got any children who have um, been born whilst you've been here studying in the UK um, as long as they're born during the the duration of your student visa as long as they're born in the UK during that time then they would be classed as one of your dependents and they could make an application under the graduate route as well. If you've got partners with you currently, then they will need to demonstrate certain things. So they'll, they'll need to demonstrate that they're still your partner and you'll need to be able to prove that either you're, you're in a civil partnership or a marriage that's recognised in the UK. 
You'll also need to show that you've been living together in a relationship for at least two years at the point you come to apply. Um, so you can't, a new partner, for example, who isn't one of your dependents at the moment, they, they wouldn't be able to apply unless you could show that you've been living together or in a relationship for, for at least two years, unless you're in a civil partnership or, or a marriage that's recognised in the UK. Another thing to note is that you can switch from the graduate visa to the skilled worker visa. So I'm sure a lot of you will have come across the skilled worker visa. And that's, I'm not going to go into it in, on this call, but there is a link on the slides um, that you'll all get. There's a link to our visa hub, and that's got loads of information about all the different visa, um, visa routes. And there's a, a huge section on the skilled worker visa. But basically, if, if you get offered a job role, which is classed as a skilled role, then your employer may be able to sponsor you in that role. And you there are different requirements that you need it restricts you to the job that you're being sponsored for so you couldn't work in any job you would need to be sponsored for a specific skilled skilled role but you can swap to that route from the graduate route so you can do that even before the two years runs out so say for example you got a, a job as a, um, a chef and you got that job whilst you're on a graduate visa you decided and your employer decided that they wanted that that role to be longer term and that you were the right person for that job then your employer would be able to sponsor you in that role and would be able to help you in an application for a skilled worker visa but as I say we're not touching on that um not going into any detail on that route today but there's loads of information on on the visa hub and if anyone's got any questions about that route then, then feel free to get in touch and then just finally, I think this is the last slide. Um, conscious we've only got half an hour and we've run over slightly, but just a few frequently asked questions. Um, we've got questions. So can you apply for the graduate route from overseas? I've covered this, but the answer is no. You've got to make sure that you're inside the UK when you make the application. How long does it take for your application to be decided? Again, I've, I've covered this as well, but normally it's eight weeks from the point that you make your application. And, and um, we do see that applications are processed a lot quicker than this, but I would just make you aware that it can take up to eight weeks. So just make sure you leave plenty of time. And again, we've been asked this, but um, will time in the UK under the graduate route lead to settlement? No, it doesn't. It it would potentially count if you're applying for indefinite leave to remain based on the 10-year requirement. But if you're looking to get indefinite leave to remain after five years, then the graduate route wouldn't um, count for that. We did have, I'm conscious we've ran over, so there's a link there to the Visa Guidelines Hub. So when you get the slides, you should be able to click on that. You'll also find my contact details on there and you'll find the contact details of, of the rest of the team as well. Um, I'm conscious we've run over. We did have a couple of questions in advance. So I don't know if you want me to cover those, Jennifer, or if you want to follow those up after. Um, I'm happy for you to answer those now if you've got the time. I'm, I just don't want you to overcommit the time that you have this afternoon as well. No, that, that's fine. So what I'll do is we had three questions in advance. So what I'll do is I'll answer those. And then if anyone's got any further follow up questions, if they send those through to, to, to well, my contact details are on the website or get in touch with Jennifer and she can send them on to me. And um, so any follow up questions, I'll answer um, separately via email, but I'll run through the ones that, that we've had in advance. Um, Thank you. So that, that's great. That's yeah, thank you. Fine. Yeah. OK, so the first question we had was, what's the best approach for the transition time between finishing my degree exams and getting my official results, i.e. when I am between visa status as a student and a worker? How can I maximise this time while still being compliant? So as I've said, um, you, can, you can apply for the graduate visa as soon as you've had confirmation of your results, but you you can um as long as your student visa allows that you can remain in the uk until your student visa um expires i think we've just lost you on the audio claire 
Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I think you're back. <laughs> Just Perfect. lasted for okay. 10 seconds there. Oh, okay, so I was saying, um, so as long as you apply for your graduate visa before the student one runs out, then it shouldn't cause any problems. You just need to be careful that your, so student visas have more restrictions in terms of the hours that you can work and things like that. So if your class is still in term time, um, after even if you've finished your exams, if it's still classed as term time, you'll only be allowed to work 20 hours per week. So you just need to be careful that you're not just relying on your student visa and if there's going to be a requirement to work additional hours then I would suggest applying for your graduate visa as soon as you can um, and just make sure that you do leave sufficient time sufficient time to apply for the graduate route make sure you have the time um, of your student visa expiring. In the next question was, once I'm on the graduate visa route and become employed, am I supposed to move to a working visa as soon as possible? The answer is no, not necessarily. So you might get a job and you might decide, yeah, this is a job for me. This is the one I want to do. And if that job is eligible for a skilled worker visa, then you might want to start discussions with your employer about whether they'd be willing to sponsor you or not for that role. The only thing I would say in terms of that is, if you do swap to the skilled worker visa, you're only sponsored for that specific role, whereas the graduate visa allows you more flexibility and it allows you to change jobs for the duration of the graduate visa. So before you make any decisions and start having discussions with your employer about the skilled worker visa, just make sure that it is what you want to do. It is what's best for you. Um, and then you can you can make that decision. The last question is um, I can only use the graduate visa route once. What should I do if I finish my undergraduate degree, use the graduate route visa, then get employed and decide I want to do a master's slash further study? I can't then route again. That's that's right. Um, and this individual said it's putting putting them off doing some temporary work. Um, all I would say in that is it completely depends on your situation. You're completely right. You can only get the graduate visa once, so you couldn't get it, do a postgrad study and then get it again. One thing I would say is that any work experience that you get or any work that you, you would um, obtain between your undergraduate study and your postgraduate study, any work you can get, especially if it's in the field that your degree was related to or in the field that you want your future employment to be in, all of that experience is going to put you in a better position to, to obtain a skilled worker role. So it really is a, a case of balancing up, do I need this work experience to potentially get a skilled worker um, position later on down the line? But yes, you're right, you just need to be careful because you, you obviously need a valid visa to remain in the UK. And if your student one runs out and you don't have the graduate one, then you might not be eligible to stay in the UK. But you also need to consider, I can't get this graduate route again. If you go on to do a post postgraduate um, course, then it might be more likely that you'd get a skilled worker role in the future. But again, there's no guarantees for that. And I just suggest that you look at the area which you're wanting to go into and just seeing how things work in that area before you make your decision. That's all of the questions we had in advance. Um, great, Claire. We've had a couple of questions in the chat. Um, so what I would suggest is the, the majority of them, if that's all right, I will email those across to you yeah. and we can send yeah. them across. I think one, if I can ask just for today, um, in terms of students getting in touch with you for further help, is there a fee mm -hmm. associated with that from Ward Hadaway? Um, so it would it would depend what the help was. If it if it's just a quick question um, and and the students don't need support going forward, if it's a quick question that we can answer, then I'm happy to do that for free. If when we get the questions through, it looks like you're going to need more in depth support or you're going to need support with your visa application, for example, then yes, there might be a charge associated with that. But we'd we'd always let you know if there's going to be a fee associated with it before we give you that advice. That's great. Thank you so much, Claire. Um, okay. So I will um, send out the recording and the um, information of these slides to everybody that's attended today. Um, and I will also pass any questions that you've put in the chat to Claire um, for her to answer. And I will distribute those once the answers have come through. All right. Thank you very much for everybody attending today. And thank you very much, Claire, for giving up your time this afternoon. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I'm going to end the recording now.
Okay, thanks. Bye.